There were no guards, I take it. None manning the gates, no. It's a different story inside, though. The corridors are crawling with Akashic. Most likely guards left behind when the wardens ran. If Chadwick was being held here, I worry that he may already be. Don't give up hope just yet, but let's move quickly. Let me check the ground floor. The ether's thick is there. Then I'll search the upper level. Good luck, Sid. Stay safe. Just how bad are the floods inside the walls? Bad enough to turn a bearer? I hope not. We're risking a lot just being here. Better keep my eyes open for signs of life. Am I going to naturally go the opposite way to where it wants me? Oh, we're looking for multiple things here, are we? Hello! Belm of Dark, Writ of Designation. Kingdom of Waylude hereby designates this facility a prison for the determent of bearers, both foreign and domestic. The purpose of this facility is to rear and train Akusa Beast for deployment in the field. The mentioned purpose is a matter of strategic secrecy. The only mention of therefore is to be punishable by death. Captive bearers have been provided solely for the pursuit of the aforementioned purpose. As permission is required for use of bearers in any other capacity. So this place was no ordinary prison. And I doubt they'll have taken the creature with them when they fled. Creature? What kind of creature? Getting a bit crowded, guys. That's ready to go. Really? More? Recommendation concerning Kuza Beast deployment. Kuza has long been recognized as an especially aggressive species. This being the case, it was hoped that the successful deployment on the battlefield might be the means of inflicting heavy casualties on the enemy. In exercises conducted thus far, however, the beast has proven incapable of distinguishing between allied and enemy combatants. As such, deployment alongside regular troops is not recommended. It proposed instead that bearer captives be employed in order to draw enemy focus the beast then driven into the fray in order to achieve maximum benefit with minimal loss of Waylude lives. Minimal loss of Waylude lives. And what happens when they run out of bearers? Even the Imperials take better care of their branded than that. It's debatable, but sure. Random of the Kuzo Beast feeding. Recent supply shortages have left us with insufficient resources to feed the Kuzo entrusted in our care. Fortunately, the creature was observed to kill and consume bearers assigned to fight beside it in the mock battles conducted as part of its training. This was further observed to enter a state of visible contentment upon feeding in this way, suggesting that live bearers may even be its preferred source of sustenance. While this behaviour is unexpected, it is not unwelcome. There is no longer of use for training purposes can now be repurposed as required. They were feeding bearers to it. 
This is even worse than I'd feared. Nothing but a caching down here. Hopefully things are looking better upstairs. I should go and see how Doris is getting on. Probably finish checking what was this way. Because we could go this way, could we not? Although I elected to go the opposite way. No. Oh. No, apparently I can't. Well, I could open that door, but maybe I misunderstood. Guess whatever it is, we've got to be fighting it in there, huh? Fodder. Downstairs. But I did find out that this place was more than just a prison. Something far more sinister was happening here. I know. I've been reading some of these documents and... It can't be true, can it? Bearers die every day in service of their masters, but this... This is so much worse. Pitting bearers against a wild beast armed with nothing but their wits? And all in order to bring about more death. And not just those who could fight, but the elderly, children even, and those who wouldn't or couldn't were disposed of. Whatever that means. I'm afraid it means they were fed to the monstrosity they kept here. Then we're too late. And I was a fool to bring you here. Don't say that. Did you find anything else? A key. But it doesn't fit any of the locks on this floor. Perhaps it will fit one of the doors downstairs. There's a corridor I haven't searched yet. Finish up here, then come and find me when you're ready. All right. I'll be there in a moment. We'll probably finish checking this floor first. Hello, gents. A little chest. Oh, I can jump down. I'm surprised. I thought I'd have to uh, run around. To there, huh? I'm sure that'll end well. A survivor. And she sounds close. Afraid. Are you alone? Are there any other survivors? Some of the guards, they're still here. But 
Something's wrong with them. Everyone else was eaten by the monster. <sighs> of course they were. Thank the Founder. It was worth our coming. But I'd rather we didn't linger. Be ready. Ready when you are. You poor thing. He must have been terrified. Did... Did... Jadwick send you? What? He fought the monster. Distracted it so I could run away. He must have sent you. He promised to free the others too. Where is he? He opened your cell, didn't he? He wouldn't be here otherwise. Chadwick. Was that? Monster's back! Chadwick, help! We have to get out of here. Doris, keep the girl safe. All right. You put that bearer-eating bastard in the ground. It's out there waiting for me. Behemoth, huh? Live. Not if it's got a taste for bearers. Well, this should be fun then. Now, how was the hole in the wall? Are we ready? Was a beast of a hunter. Huh? There you go, I was gonna say, come on. Stagger your bitch. Hey, these moves. Waste my ability to stagger him. I want to hit him with everything we've got. Jesus. He stops moving for two fucking seconds. No comment for you.
Finally. Sid, are you hurt? I'm fine. I think. No. What is it? A diary. I gave it to Chadwick before we went our separate ways. He was here. Do you think that creature? I'm sure he fought bravely to the last. The girl is safe thanks to him. Chadwick. You fool. Come on. We have to get her back to the hideaway. We don't want his sacrifice to have been in vain. No. Of course not. I'll see that she's looked after from now on. It's the least I can do. From what I hear, you've barely left the girl's side in days. I hope she's recovering from her ordeal. She is. Slowly, but surely. She's far tougher than she looks. I thank the flames we found her. If we hadn't... I know. But we did. I'm sorry we weren't able to save Chadwick. There's no need to apologize. Without your help, I would never have found out what happened to him. How he fought to the bitter end to save her. To save Heide Marie. That's the man I remember. The man I thought of as a brother. I wish I could have met him. I'd like to hear more about your past. If you don't mind, that is. Of course. You already met my former master. She trained Chadwick and I to do two things. Kill and obey. We were supposed to be sold to the highest bidder when the time came. But no bid was ever high enough to convince her to part with us. For years, we were her daggers in the shadows. But we could never quite shake our doubts about the things she made us do. And then, one day, we just couldn't do them anymore. So we escaped. But staying together was out of the question. They would have found us too easily. After so many years of training, the pull to serve was always strong. It scared me to think he might have taken another master, become a dagger in someone else's hand. But even in captivity, the battles he fought were his own. And he died not as someone's tool, but as a hero. Heide Marie is proof of that. Bearers can cast off their shackles. And the curse breakers will show them how. I'll fight until my dying breath to see it done. For Chadwick, and for all of us. Thank you, Doris. We'll be counting on you. Breath of Darkness going near, which is going near cooldown by 2.0 seconds. I guess that is another hunt that we're uh, passing by on. Another behemoth. Uh, he looks bigger than the last fucking one. But maybe not. Let's go ask. Behemoth King. S rank. Okay, maybe he is tougher. <laughs> oh shit. Is this guy on par with a fucking dragon?
Yeah, get out of that, chaps. Right way, until I stagger him now, I think. He's not far off, is he? Famous last words. Okay, that's ready again. Just gotta stagger him again. Oh, jeez. Go down, you big oaf. Ow. Running out of potions here. <coughs> Not good. Not a good idea. Oh, you stop all that nonsense. Pain in the ass. Apocalypse. Uh, hot, 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 hot. Oh, I dodged one. Glad I got out of that, I think. If I could dodge his moves, that'd be great.
maximum damage. So 48. Well, we definitely have enough of this stuff now. We just need that last... Is it dark steel and then... That's it, I think. The sword. No match for you, eh, Toggle? Yeah, you time, Toggle. Right, back to what we were actually doing. The entire village looks abandoned. Now, which house would I book where I'm living? A complete botany of baines, graffitia, or a tale of wyvern, white of flower, and black of root, the latter of which gives us an inky gall when cut or crushed. The tribesmen of the northern storm pick their skin with the oaken needles sewed in such, doing curious patterns about their arms and legs in honour of their heathen gods. The gall is passing toxicate, that a single drop taken by mouth may result in cramps most painful for five days and five nights. Applied to a wound, certain death. But a slip of the needle end a young warrior's life. It is said that the skin print failed to find favour among the heavens. <laughs> Forest's fabulary. The Moogle. No spiritual spite appears more often in Valesterian folklore than the humble Moogle. Though they are occasionally painted as mischievous souls akin to pixies or imps, most stories depict them as clumsy or congenial spirits who delight in helping mankind with their daily labours. They are said to have sweet tooths, leading to the common superstition that one must not leave cakes or other sweetmeats uncovered overnight. Let naught remains but crumbs come morning. In appearance they are described as being covered head to toe in soft white fur, giving the small dark wings by which they are somehow able to take flight. The brightly coloured pom-poms that protrude from the tops of their heads. And yet there is one detail regarding the Moogle that most find more remarkable than even the orb on top of its brow. The fact that the creatures actually exist. Preposterous, I hear you cry. Everybody knows Moogles are stuff of legend. I quite agree, but every legend has its basis in truth. In this case of the Moogle, the fact may be not too dissimilar from fiction. Ancient beasts list the white mole whose feet do not touch the ground. Among the beasts of the realm, the illustration besides the name, white is none other than the Moogle. Of course, it is true that the creatures are not known to still survive the twins in the modern Perhaps their miniature wings carried them to other claims. Perhaps they were hunted to extinction. Perhaps, just perhaps, they do still live among us. Hidden away far from human view. His interests were certainly varied. From a distance. Chapter 16. The Fall of the Bearers. The emergence of the first magic adepts was widely heralded as a gift from the gods. Indeed, the title with which those with the gifts came to be commonly known is most likely a contraction of Bearer of the Heavenly Blessing. The wording used by the tribunes of the time. Those born with the blessing were lauded as living crystals and granted high office and plentiful rewards for their status as chosen ones. Over the years, this reverence for their kind would become a fully fledged religion led by the bearers themselves, a development that would prove fateful. The Taoist nations of the time were anonymous of their disapproval of the founding of the church. While the authorities had for years welcomed bearers into positions of power in their own structures of state, they were mistrusting of an organisation led by bearers, for bearers. Efforts were immediately made to chasten the church and its followers, banning members from holding office, evicting adherents from their homes, and breaking up meetings by force. The church responded by forming a volunteer army to resist this persecution, and yet it continued, putting a cycle of ever-increasing bloodshed and rancour and a growing rift between those born with the blessing and those without. It began with beatings and street clashes would eventually spill over into an all-out war that consumed the greater part of the twins for nigh on a generation and decimated the population of men and bearers both. The deluge of blood that stained the land crimson and left an even more lasting mark upon the minds of the Valisterian people. After the bearers' last resistance was crushed, the nations of Valisteria came together to sign a continental accord that initiated the system of slavery that persists across the realm to this day. Its well-known phrase, bearers are other than human, 
as its roots in the bitter war of the years before, in the unblessed's only excuse for their calamitous refusal to allow the blessed to decide their own destinies. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. Royal Intelligence Earth Training Report In the wake of the tragic fire at Kera Novant in 873V, and the subsequent depletion of our most highly appreciated intelligences, all main strongholds were instructed to redouble training in clandestine manoeuvres, proving weaponry, assassination techniques, and dispatch promising volunteers to stone here for inspection. This report details progress made by the stronghold at Ganrick in revigorating Weilut's ranks of esteemed intelligences. That was a lot of reading. Right, so I mean, that's it then. I assume someone's not going to let us leave with this book. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you. From a distance, so to speak. Subtle. I know who you are. Then we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make. But by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. I mean, bigger men have tried. Let's and these see, other guys you've got, really? As you wish. How did you not get staggered? Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book, for now. 
The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Wait. Damn it. Strange ninjas. Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about. This must be the orphanage. Hopefully the registry is still here. Bad Bad Conservatory, which have incorporation. Kingdom of Oilud hereby incorporates this institution, wherein juvenile bearers are to be granted the opportunity to give themselves in service to the state as soldiers. Any succumbing to the Crystal's curse or otherwise perishing are to be disposed of with all haste. The graveyard is strictly reserved for the uncursed. Bearer disposal within its bounds are punishable by death. Disposed of. Conditioning schedule. The day's exercise will consist of press yard, 20 sandbags for such duration as the instructor shall dictate. The furnace, burn intensely to be gradually increased. Live combat, one to three hellhounds depending on performance. Conditioning. This is nothing short of torture. Herman wasn't exaggerating. It's a wonder he survived this place. I need to find that registry. I have recently learned that my own daughter was among the children turned to stone by the brutal training I subjected them to. I had not so much as thought of her since handing her over to the authorities as a babe. Quarries with the military confirmed it. It was her. I had been torturing my own flesh and blood. And now I see her everywhere. Today one of the children smiled at me in the hope of receiving a few scraps from my table. It was her smile. The smile she inherited from her mother. The mother I killed for giving birth to a bearer. I guess I've all come back to haunt me. My daughters. My wives. All of them. All of those children. So many have died at my hands. I can bear the guilt no longer. So I have decided. Tomorrow. I, too, must die. It will be the last order I give those poor wretches. The last torment I subject them to. I will command them to tear me limb from limb. And tear my incursed corpse beneath the white tree. Whose crooked hands reach to the sky in supplication. Besides me, my shame. My curse. The record of all their names. Those I have wronged. This reads like a suicide note. Did the director go through with his plan? There's only one way to find out. This must be the registry. Bad Batch Conservatory Registry of Bearer Losses. Hands 10 years old. So many names. This place was a slaughterhouse. But where is the architect of all this misery? Oh, you had to bring a cannon kind of guy. Of time, I suppose. Ugh. This place is cursed. I hate cannon guys. Oh, 
Yes, I know, I hate these guys, they suck ass. So maximum fucking damage. You're not going nowhere, mate. I'm done here. Let's get the registry back to Herman. Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. From a distance, no mention is made as the name of the author, whether that is because the title page has been lost to time, or because the tone was published anonymously, it is impossible to say. You... you found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I fear the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors. And I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something. That the truth is just a matter of collective belief. And that if enough people believe a lie... that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable. That it can be changed. Provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather... closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive. When enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you. As I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. Scholar's Bonnet. Vivian Ninetales scholarly headwear. Put it to her upon the completion of her studies at the University of Camper. You have the men and women of the blighted world the gift of truth. May them believe in you, as I do. Vivian Ninetales, displayed in Clive's chambers. I hear that you travelled to Ash, Sid. 
Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. If I may, the bearer registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces. Like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning, never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Honor their memory. See that their names live on. That way, at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you, Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach, and the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering, and in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. A hideaway welcome. Edith seems fond of the silver bow we gave her. So much so that she's been taking to setting it atop her belly as she rests. To hear her tell it, the rascal kicks something fierce when she does too. Sounds like we've another fighter on our hands. And none too soon. I can hardly wait to teach our newest little crossbreaker everything I know. I suppose we can all celebrate first. No need to get ahead of ourselves now. Gav. The greatest gift. It was like a lifetime ago. It was a lifetime ago. That afternoon on Man's Hill was our very first adventure, but somehow I knew even then that it would not be our last. I will never forget that day. And the simple fact that you have not either fills my heart with a joy so fierce I can't describe it. Since the moment we first met, you have always been an important part of me, the half that makes me whole. When times are darkest, you are my light. When I am lost, you are my guiding star. You are just what I need. You are what I need. You are the greatest gift. Jill. Note of thanks. My Lord Marquis, I write to thank you of your kind consideration you have shown for those whose names are written within the pages of the Book of Martyrs. I know that it would move them deeply to know that the first shield of the Phoenix laments their passing, though each and every member of our order stands ready to sacrifice their lives in service of the Phoenix. I do not doubt that those who are taken before their time go with regret for long years of duty left undone, but they should live on in the memory of a proud son of House Rosfield. Such as yourself shall surely go some way to soothing their sorrows. May the phoenix flames burn ever in your heart. Cyril, bearer of the burning quill. Making amends. Master Clive. I'm aware there are matters of much greater import which demand your attention. But should you find yourself a moment, I bid that you visit me in the shelves that I might ask a single favour concerning His Highness Prince Dion. Hippocrates. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. Lawsman Hippocrates. I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion. But I can't imagine what for. 
Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam, and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the Dragoons, his studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tale. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. Clive. That's about origin. You here to say your goodbyes, are you? For now, then. For now. But you better come back, or I'll fly up there and drag you home by your ear. Thank you, Karen. Didn't think you'd find the thought appealing. Look, just don't die, all right? Changing leadership's bad for business. Now ah, you're off to kill a god. So what? You've done everything else you put your mind to, haven't you? You could do this too. Seems this place has been flooded twice over. Purple flowers blooming next to a waterfall. Shouldn't be too hard to find. I mean, this is the waterfall, I guess, and that must be the, uh, the wyvern.
Mine's this bird, so I'm obsessed with dying. Here they are. Might as well pick enough for a bunch, I suppose. Here's a Maluk. Why does that name ring a bell? Is Gizmo Luke the serpent boss from nine? Or am I thinking of something else? Damn it, so close.
rest in peace. Thanks, girl. Night of the Splendid Heart. You guys should be on my side. You always have to jump away when I try and do that, don't you? Jackass. Too late now. One more hunt to do. Prince of Death. Skies are always fun. Hopefully, they kept still for two seconds. He literally teleport out of that. What a prick.
I mean, they just teleport out, I can. Fuck you! You and your soul hobbies can suck my dick. Ow. Hunter hunted, trophied. Does that mean that's the last one or would you get a gold medal if you did all the hunts? Dark steel. That might actually be our last ingredient for our last weapon. I'm getting tired of these things. Square origin. Crack the crystal. Kill a god. Save the world. I miss anything? No, that's pretty much the plan. Not a very good one. If you ask me. But then. Can't say I've had much practice in killing gods. Now, forging kit to kill a god? That I might be able to help you with. Against the least I can do, after all you've given us. Then it's more than enough. <laughs> you can thank me when you get back. What do you want? Here we go. Finally crafted it. The gutter damag rug. Sure. Not bad. If I do say so much. Half past twilight, Drake Beard. Very nice. That it. Fine. Horseman. I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. Wild Wyvern Tail. Records suggest that the Wyvern Tail was first cultivated for the purpose of distilling a purple dye from its petals. However, when the tended blooms were discovered to lose their hue over time, the gardeners of early Valestia made the fateful decision to investigate the practical properties of their roots instead. You did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. time then <laughs> no only to the shelves our lawsman has something he'd like to give you master Hippocrates. no i dare not show my face before him not after everything i have done i have taken countless innocent lives and ruined countless more all because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. Then that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. You are right. I'm 
must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Master Harpocrates, pray. Accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environments in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins. But once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates. I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm, for only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness, I shall await your return. do not define us. No wonder my stepmother didn't like him. <laughs> For reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. not for you. I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wyvern tales. I shall plant their seeds. 
that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soul in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. When it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A stolas quill. Or more precisely, my stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day, you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes, I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Stolas Quill. Lomon Hippocrates' best loved writing implement, whose nib has scrapped many a learned tome. It is said that the owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. Hippocrates. Splitting Clive's chambers. Bahamut's mercy. A gift from the very first emperor of Sambrek to his infant son. During has graced the hand of every dominant of Bahamut since. The ether age absorbed from the icon over the years, aiding the next Imperial Scion in drawing out the full potential of their bloodline. But now the Empire lies in ruin. The bloodline is broken. But let it be with Bahamut, as was always intended. Reduce Giga Flare cooldown time by six seconds. Knowledge hoarded is knowledge lost. Asquardion. I well recall. A time I spent at the Imperial Palace instructing the young prince on the history of our realm. It was quite unlike the other noble-born children I had taught. Not only for the keenness with which he listened, but the earnestness of his conviction. He truly believed that it was the Empire's duty to serve the people, and was determined to study the past. He might not repeat its mistakes, which is the reason why what befell Twinside weighs so heavy on his soul. He must live with the consequences, and I fear it will take more than merely time to heal such wounds. It will take forgiveness. Not from you or me, nor his countrymen, nor even from his late father, you know from himself. Only then might his flower bloom again. Ah, yes. You have arrived at a solution, then. Dear more carriers. Indeed. A feat befitting the final act. I congratulate myself that I shall live long enough to see it. A feat in itself for a man of my years. But to be serious, it is no small thing to march against fate, Clive. You must be certain of your footing. At least the winds of destiny divert you from your course. Are you certain of your footing, Clive? I am. Then go. And do what you must. I have a few new notes that might interest you. Max! We did it! I believe you will find most interesting. We had a level like 8 was the max, not like 10, but... <sighs> Lovely. You wish to study the tomes? Any more reading there, if I ever so wish. Everything you needed. Hold again. Clive, it occurs to me that a single word of thanks does not nearly suffice to express my gratitude for reuniting me with from a distance. The tome made me who I am today, and yet I thought that I should never set my eyes upon it again. Those who took it from me had forever robbed me of a part of myself, and I am whole again, thanks to you. I regret that I can only fill in the gaps in your knowledge, not the holes in your soul. For which reason I shall ever be in your debt. Vivian. 